Welcome. You can see that we have a different format with the split screen. We're keeping in mind the stay at home order. Um, we know this is very important uh, to keep us all safe. So we'll be having our videos in this format from, from here on out probably. And um, today's theme is the prayer of endurance. We know that you might be watching this on Good Friday. And so um, we contemplate Jesus's death on the cross, what he endured out of love for us. And we look at our lives, especially at this time where we're all at home and we're having to endure many things. And we can relate our experiences with Jesus on the cross. So this, this theme is the prayer of endurance. And um, as we begin, uh, Jeremiah, would you please lead us in a song? Definitely. I invite you to make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Another breath. Let it out. Our song today is from Carrie Job. It's called I Am Not Alone. It helps us to know that Jesus did it for us. We can do it for others. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. And I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear, I am not alone. I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, I am not alone, I am not alone, I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, in the midst of Deep sorrow, I see your light is breaking through. Dark night, not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, we fight my every battle. I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, you're my strength, you're my defender, you're my refuge in this storm. And through these trials, You've always been faithful You bring healing to my soul Cause I am not alone I am not alone You will go before me You will never leave me I am not alone I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me. Thank you, Jesus, for always being with us. You're never alone in your love, in relationship with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, amen. Jeremiah. Thank you, amen. If any of you who are watching right now feel alone, um, you're not alone. Jesus is with you. He's risen from the dead. And he is alive and he's with you. And he undergoes this suffering of loneliness. Even if the kids are all running around, you still might feel alone because you don't feel understood or you don't feel seen. Um, and this is a real suffering that you are called to endure, but not alone with Jesus. He endured it out of love for us so that we could be united with him and endure it ourselves out of love for others, as Jeremiah mentioned. So this suffering in the Christian life has meaning. And we're going to read from Scripture now. This is from Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. We even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, that has been given to us. The scripture alone, that affliction produces endurance, endurance, character, character, hope. You know, it's in that suffering that produces the endurance. And that, that's what's standing out most, most to me. Um, because as followers of Jesus Christ, we were told that we are going to have to endure some trials, that we are going to be tested. It, it's, it's part of the gig. And the thing that helps us to endure is knowing what is the final goal? Where is, does the hope lie? For example, let's say your family, you're going to Disneyland. And your, your, your kids, are they're excited. We're going to Disneyland. And you jump in the car, you hop on the freeway, and you bumper to bumper traffic. Now, is it a bummer? Yeah, yeah definitely a bummer. You know, um, you're going to be there for a while. You're going to get tired. It's going to can get hot maybe the battery goes out on your electronic device and now you have to stare out the window and um but you know that it's worth it because in the end you're going to pull up to disneyland and go have a fantastic day or weekend or vacation um for us as followers as believers true believers in jesus christ sometimes we, we get lost in the mix of our our daily trials and we say so what i mean what's the point where what is the point of all this, being stuck at home and having to quarantine and not see my family and our friends? Um, what What is the point of this life? That discouragement that we might feel when we forget our destination. Um, and so that's that's the great reminder. Our hope is in the Lord. And it's it's this feeling of, of not getting things accomplished that kind of gets to me. I know I like to get stuff done. I like to be productive. And when I have to stay at home or when we have to stay at home, sometimes we feel like we're not accomplishing anything. Um, but the prayer of endurance, there's something being accomplished there that we could never do by our own power. Um, we know that even though it doesn't feel like we're accomplishing things, God is actually ch changing us so that we become people of deeper character. When we endure mm -hmm. suffering, God is working on us to make us deeper person, you know, we, we, we become people of depth, of, of, of character. Um, so it's not that we're not accomplishing anything. God is accomplishing something through us, even though, you know, we don't like that feeling. You know? Yes, it's kind of like being stuck on a, on a treadmill. It's right. so the best thing I can think of right now. You know, you, you, you hit quick and you start moving, you start moving and you, after a while, realize, I am so bored. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just sitting here. This is so boring. I'm not going from point A to point B. I'm just stuck here at point A. But the reality is that your body, your physiology, you're changing. You are growing, um, you know, and to endure is just, I don't want to take credit for this because you, you gave me this, this definition and I think it's great. But the Greek word for, for meaning for endurance is to remain under or to remain in. Let's just take a, let's take a moment to, to, to remain in this moment. To remain in. 
our adversity, to remain in our struggle. We look at people throughout our lives. We look at athletes, celebrities. You know, sometimes we idolize them and we say, oh, man, if I could be like that. Look at them. They're so talented. It's a God-given gift. But we don't always focus on the fact that they remained in their struggle. They worked every day. They got up early. They worked out. They worked on their craft. They surrounded themselves with people of greater character than them that they could admire and look up to and say, I want to get to that. And they kept every day. They remained in their conviction to be the best that they could be. And just because something doesn't feel good doesn't mean we're, you know, God isn't at work in that. You know, we make a commitment to our faith to take the spiritual life seriously. And when we do that, we know that there will be times of desolation times where it doesn't feel good, where we're being called to endure the work of God on our souls, on our hearts. And so it's a reminder that our faith isn't just about feelings. Um, Very true. That the prayer of endurance is one of the most efficacious prayers that we could make, one of the most productive things we could do, because it's a God action producing in us proven character. Um, And the other thing I was just thinking is a lot of times we don't have perspective you know, when you're in it, you can get a little bit like, is this good? Is this bad? Is this, is God here? Is not? I, and and, and you, you're in the dark. Um, but that's part of the prayer of endurance is that there's some darkness. And that trust that we have must be deeper. And only later will we have perspective. And can we come back and see, wow, God was really at work there. And going through that suffering, enduring that has made me the person I am today. Yeah, I was told that when I was going to Catholic school, um, I was about third grade, you know, and the sister who was in charge of my class said that the teacher is always quiet during a test. She'd always say that. And we're like, okay, okay, okay. But then when she would, you know, read gospel stories to us and tell us things about people that had to go through their trials and their tribulations and show us where God was present and then where God wasn't present, she would always say, the teacher is always quiet during the test. Mm-hmm. We're given all the tools we need. We're given the support system. We're given all these things. And then we're sent out into the world. God gave us life and created and said, go um, and come find me again. Um, and it's just, you know, it's this thing about being being tested. And again, you said sometimes we feel so alone, but God is out there. He's just saying, you got this. Come on. Come on. One more step. One more step. One more step. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'd never heard that before. That the teacher is quiet and silent during the test. It's so cool. Um, thank you. And um, that that the last part of our scripture that we read is about hope. And um I know when I meet somebody that has endured suffering in their life, um, somebody that has a true depth of character, that gives me hope. Um, And so we, if we endure suffering and through God's work, we are to be proven in our character, we can be hope for other people. this is that, that life of sanctity, that, that call to holiness that each one of us is, is called to by God to be like the saints. On this Good Friday, um, we remember Jesus' enduring of the passion. And we relate our experiences of loneliness, of, of being misunderstood, or whatever it is that we're going through, that God is calling us to endure. We allow for these experiences to be united with Jesus so that we might follow him through the cross to the resurrected life that he holds for us with the Father in heaven. This is our destination, and we are not to forget it, because it's with this in mind that our suffering has meaning. So you're not alone, and um, we are all headed to that place together with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Jeremiah, we've, 
Amen. Would you uh, <laughs> would you lead us in a little uh, prayer through you know bef- to close out this video, please? Definitely. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your ultimate sacrifice. Today, as we remember you on this Good Friday, you were the shining example of love from our Father above that he sent you to us. May your life be the perfect example for us to mimic. May we remember that you endured so much today and throughout your life because you loved us for who we are and who we're going to be. We bring ourselves to you freely. We ask that you send the Holy Spirit to guide us each and every day as we do our best to follow in your footsteps. We love you. We thank you for everything. We hope to make you proud. We ask for you to remain to be with us each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in peace. Thanks be to Thanks be to God. Yeah. So thank you, Jeremiah. This is this is fun. And we're praying for all of you, uh, our St. Mary Magdalene community and family and friends, and um, especially for the gift of endurance. Uh, that you will uh, be able to enter into this triduum, be involved in, in Good Friday and through the triduum uh, with Jesus and his passion, death, and resurrection. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, don't forget about the challenges, Father. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's going to be some slides coming uh, pretty soon with a couple of challenges right about now. I don't know if that's going <laughs> 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 Right about.